Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Today we are in Woodhurst in Washington. Woodhurst is a new town thanks to Matt VT and this great map. Um, it's got a whole town. It has um, obviously a house and a shop and so you can do all that stuff. Fill up, uh, fix your truck, fix your trailer, uh, get fuel, rest, do all those things. But this here is a logging community and we kind of speed things up. We do have the downtown area here, all the shops and things like that. Restaurants, stores, but it also has quite a few places where we can actually pick up loads and drop off loads. I'm going to go ahead and show you the map and where we are right now. So they've got Georgia Pacific. That is a, I guess it's a paper producing company manufacturer. That's actually where we're going to be picking up. You can do heavy, uh, heavy haul with Lee Pair, uh, Cornejo. You can, I think they really just ship trucks and stuff like that because there's just like a whole bunch of trucks stacked up in there. Um, but kind of the heart of the entire town is there is a logging company for rustic then they have a mill where they can manufacture it and then of course georgia pacific also manufactures their own products um, think about things like napkins paper towels bathroom tissue uh, paper plates paper cups paper bowls anything like that and we're actually going to be hauling some paper today but we'll go out and take a look at the rest of the town before we get on this drive so this is cornejo right here I'm not sure exactly what sort of store it is. Or maybe it's, you know what, maybe it's just like a truck repair. Um, the lead hair is over there for your heavy haul stuff. Um, and then we go up the road. There's a whole bunch of different shops and stuff up here. But if we go up the road here and over this little mountain, then we'll drop down and we'll see there is the mill up here. is the logging site where they're getting all the wood from and then over here is the actual little farm slash yard so you can't actually whoa sorry about that so you can't actually pick up any loads here but you have the surrounding businesses to do that so you've got the shop you can fuel up over here this area is where you buy the yard to check my map again yeah just right over here is where you can rest there is a little shed there is the uh, house itself got a Hummer sitting in there so pretty cool little yard from Matt VT it just released a day or two ago and we're going to feature it so let's get to the drive as I've already said we're uh, we got to go up over this hill and this cool little bridge that he put in it's pretty cool um, head over to Georgia Pacific where we can there you know they're loading up the trailer right now and we are headed over to the dollar store in Wenatchee so it's about a five and a half hour drive game time I'm gonna be speeding things up because we're already spending so much time as it is uh, going through this new yard from Matt VT and we're all set up let's see if they actually have it loaded but that's this is gonna be our ride for today so, we've got a fresh paint skin from Richard Brown, uh, Consolidated Freightways, on this uh, Corporation Volvo White. Uh, this was done by the other Corey, and it's his take on kind of a mid-90s uh, Volvo. And I uh, have to use Richard Brown skins because it's absolutely great. We're matching it up with the Tempty Super Seal uh, trailer from Smarties um, because... Richard Brown has also done that skin, and that is why the colors match absolutely perfect. So, kind of makes sense. We'll do like a mid 90s truck with a company that was running in the mid 90s, actually ended up uh, declaring bankruptcy early 2000s. I think it was 2002 or 2003. So, we're kind of playing the role right now. So, let's get in and go ahead and get ourselves over to where are we going? Uh, to Wenatchee at the dollar store. We are carrying. 24,255 pounds of mixed 
product from Dixie, paper plates, paper bowls, and paper cups. So that is what is going on today. Let's go ahead and get her started. The American people are counting on you to drive. Let's go. All right. Let's go ahead and get the windows down. Lights on. Lights are already on. And we'll crank her. Trying to keep her somewhat period. So we have a... Uh, 350 horsepower Cummins N14 Select. Don't need a whole lot of horsepower. We're usually not carrying much in this trailer. More than about, uh, I'd say, 30, 40,000 pounds, something like that. And, of course, um, Consolidated Freightway is... They did some long haul as well, but also known uh, for their regional stuff and their LTL work. So, definitely got a, got a box trailer on here for today and not a ton of weight. So let us go ahead and get going. Parking brake is out. Make sure we got our lights on. Yep, there's our lights. And let's roll. Sorry about that little glitch right there. I didn't even get about two or three feet and I realized that I had an issue with my track IR, which allows me to look around from left to right and scan everything just by turning my head. But we are back in business now and headed off to Wenatchee. Got a little ravine there. We got to make sure that we are... Uh... I don't know if that's a mistake or what. Kind of looks like it could... That's like floating ground. Maybe a little, uh, little bug in the town here. We are running a uh, just a standard 10 speed, and uh, we got 3.9 rears. We don't have a whole lot of horsepower, but we do need to get uh, get going, get off the uh, off the starting line pretty quick. So I kind of upped it from a 3.5 to a 3.9. So we're set to more for the uh, haul. We're not going very fast with uh, 350 horsepower anyway, so not really missing out. Turn left. Don't need to be that careful trying to get out of here. Let's back up a little bit. Let that guy go by because he's coming down that hill and it's not like he's got a lot of brakes. Not if I'm going to be jumping out in front of him last minute. So yeah, I was uh, kind of, I was looking around the town uh, when I first got it yesterday. I was trying to figure, because there's so many businesses that you can uh, run jobs out of here. And I thought, yeah, it kind of makes sense. It's a logging town. Probably the most obvious thing is someone's going to put a logging trailer on here. And I think that'd be cool too. Or I'll get a, you know, get a step deck and run some lumber. In 400 like, meters. Turn left. Like to a Home Depot or something like that. And I was thinking, it's what's so cool about this town is it it really is mirrored after what a real town would be like in terms of its industry. Like, if you're a logging town, it makes sense that you have some sort of mill to be able to process that, turn it into lumber, um, logs, furniture, whatever. But then they also have the component of having a manufacturer like Georgia Pacific in here uh, that can take all of those products and do runs like we're doing today. So I decided, all right, no logging trailer, no step deck. Let's go ahead and put this, uh, put this box truck, this box trailer on here. And it kind of lined up perfectly, to be honest with you, because Richard Brown just um, updated the skin on this... Uh, this corporation Volvo white truck by the way this truck is free it is on Truckee. I'll have a link down in the description below the trailer can be found on the steam workshop also free and the skins that go uh, that correspond to them by Richard Brown 
you can find on his Facebook page. I'll leave a link down below, but they are also free. He just asks that you please do not share them and don't even drop the link anywhere. It's uh, He wants everything directed towards Facebook, and that makes a whole lot of sense. The guy puts a whole lot of work uh, into all of these skins, so let's just... Let's just listen to what the guy says, right? <laughs> um, I guess people weren't really... Uh, I don't know if they were doing anything nefarious or anything like that, or sharing links or hosting it on other sites, but that's too bad, especially for someone who put in so much time to get us these skins, and they're completely free, like I said. In 400 meters, turn right. She slows down pretty good. Jake Brake does her job. That's when you know that the truck and trailer were done by the same skinner. The colors are absolutely perfect. And you know, the one thing that I meant to do, because I was actually going to go ahead at first and do a logging trailer, um, and I was going to use a logging trailer and a different truck, and it was going to be in a completely different profile, and I decided to do something a little bit unique because we've got this skin now for, uh, for this Volvo. But the one thing that I forgot to do, because I looked up the weather, and I know that it is snowing or about to snow, up near Spokane, which is a little bit, the, this is a little bit west of Spokane um, on the map, so I figured, you know, it's probably going to snow. I still have a, I think I have like a 25% probability of rain uh, on my settings, but kind of simulated it to be like, hey, let's, we went with uh, Frosty's Winter mod, but we're using the, cl uh, the clean road. Oh, nice, we got the bypass. The clean road add-on. Uh, from Frosty. Are we gonna hit that? No. Whoa. Whoa. Keep right. And then exit right. We'll do, Morgan. We'll do. As I remember, I don't think this is. Exit we have to right. slow down for this one because we're just transitioning. So, something a little bit weird about the truck and. Um, Sometimes the you get a little bit of stutter and you don't get all of the blinks out of it, out of the turn signal. The uh, the truck, by the way, in case I didn't mention, is from the other Cory. It is a free truck on Steam. Um, no, on Trucky. Yeah, I told you. I told you where to get it, but I didn't tell you who did it. Um, so, considering the truck is free, this is actually a pretty decent truck. And nothing else that I've seen, kind of of this uh, time period, like mid '90s. So, hats off to the other Corey. Great job on it. Continue straight. So just decided to go with the 10 speed, um, doing a little bit of research, I saw a lot of 9 speeds, a lot of 8 plus 2, so 8 LLs, um, saw a couple 13 speeds as well, but for the, the vast majority of them were 9 and 10 speeds, so I just went ahead with the, uh, with the 10 speed, I'm going to drop our speed down just a little bit here. In 400 meters, turn left. Turn left? Yeah. Oh, you know what? No, I'm in the right lane. The the correct lane. And the right lane. Because both turn these left. lanes turn to the left. Let's get another look at this truck here. 
really time period. Looks really cool. Oh, I'm definitely going to crash trying to do this third person. When we go into the bridge, we'll just... Just kind of hop back in the cab before we cr start crashing. Continue straight. It's a pretty tight turn there anyway. Ooh, it's a steep little on-ramp here. Keep it right here in fifth. zoom out on the map a little bit see what we got ahead of us we have no idea we're still going straight as far as we know see if we can merge here pretty soon I have to wait for these guys to go by yeah we can get over now So a little bit of a uh, up, update, a little bit of news on how I'm going to do everything for my rig. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to go forward with building a dashboard. Probably just build it out of like plywood so it's you know, not super heavy, but um, I don't really have access to an existing dashboard that I can pull like out of a truck or something like that. Keep right. And then exit right. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Exit right. Well, you got to let me through, guys. I find it absolutely crazy that the AI, when you jump out just over the line at a stopped, at a light or something, or right at an intersection, you cross the line by two inches and then cross traffic stops. But when you have a blinker on they have no idea what's going on anyway um, so yeah I'm probably gonna build a it's not gonna be like a full dashboard it's probably just gonna be a section that is holding uh, holding a few gauges and what I've decided to do is go with sim projects uh, for now uh, because they have a board called the pro gauge board and it makes it a lot simpler to plug a bunch of things in. I don't have to worry about doing a uh, crazy amount of soldering. I don't have to worry about coding if it was an Arduino board or anything. So uh, for the gauges themselves, I'm going to go with the Pro Gauge board from Sim Projects. And the hardest part is trying to find a good uh, speedometer. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with their speedometer and tachometer because they do have one. It's not ideal because ideally I would like a speedometer that does 85 miles an hour max on the uh, gauge and I believe theirs is 120. Uh, it's not too bad but obviously if you you know the higher you go up like 160 miles an hour or 220 miles an hour on the gauge like look at what I'm driving right now. I'm going 50 miles an hour. I'm probably only going to use like 25% of the gauge and the area that I would normally want to see is just Continue compressed. Straight. Nice, we got another bypass. It's so compressed that it'll be a little bit more difficult. So ideally, in a perfect world, 85 miles an hour would be an ideal uh, maximum on the speedometer. And in a perfect world, I could find a tachometer that has, that has uh, 3,000 RPM as the max. If we look down in the truck right here, we've got 80 on the speedometer, 2,500 on the tack. So I'm able to use more of the tack um, so I can glance down and easier see exactly where I am. But I think for simplicity, because I don't know how to deal with a lot of uh, third-party gauges for speedometers, and a lot of them are GPS-enabled, which means 
I don't have all the wires at my disposal. I'm, I'm not going to try to rig something. Um, I don't have that prerequisite. So I'm going to go with the speedometer and the uh, and the tachometer from Sim Products as well as their Pro Gauge board. And then I'm going to probably add on to that afterwards and look at the other gauges like fuel, oil temperature, water pressure, um, uh, uh, PSI gauge, all those kinds of things. I can add those on later around the around the display, and I can still plug those in uh, up to six different devices, in addition to the speedometer and tachometer. So I'm just gonna find. Uh, maybe I'll only do two at a time, and I'll kind of build it up. But the board makes it so much easier, and there's no programming in it like an Arduino, which I'm learning now, but. I know enough to realize that I don't know what I'm doing and I'm sure I can find some online sketches where I can just copy some code but let's make this a you know tackle one problem at a time and so I'm just really gonna make the hardware and building the box be the primary thing as far as a button box goes I'm probably gonna buy one pre-done I do want to build one at some point but I don't have the skill to do that currently so I'm just gonna get one that's already pre-built and I'm probably gonna see how I can build that into the existing um, right side of the dash that is gonna hold the gauges so that'll kinda be my my MacGyver to it is the box that can that contains everything Oh, right in between gears there we go so that is the update on that. I'm not entirely happy with the gauges I'm going to get, but it doesn't mean that I can't replace them later when I know a little bit more of what I want. And in the meantime, the, see the good thing about going with the gauges from Sim Products, or Sim Projects, rather, is they are actually... In 400 meters, turn left. They are comparatively cheaper than real-world gauges. Once you start looking into gauges where you get like the ideal maximum speed, ideal maximum RPM on a on the tachometer, and you have backlighting and all these things, then you're you could Very be nice. looking, you know, for a a minor gauge, you know, probably in like the anywhere in the sixty to ninety dollar range. And as we stall, we'll go ahead and start it first. And we stalled again. No? Yep. Having a tough go at it. Alright, let's get rolling. Oh, that's why. It didn't drop to the lower range. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I could hold uh, quite a bit more weight than this uh, 24,000 pound load. Because I've got a lot of uh, a lot of torque on this. Anyway, that is kind of what I'm thinking for the uh, for the dashboard and everything. It'll give me something that I can work with now. And to be honest, usually when I do a project like this, I there's always like some sort of first draft because I do something wrong, or I figure out later, you know, I wish I would have redone this in a whole different layout, and then maybe by that time I figure out a good way to get a uh, third-party speedometer that I like in there and tachometer, and then I can redo it later on. But I don't. Ha I'm not going to wait like two or three years until I can properly code and wire and everything like that. I'm just going to go with a simpler solution that, for the time being, will allow me to have those gauges like right there um, by my wheel. And then I'll mess with things like, obviously I'll probably keep it in this mode for video so you guys can see the uh, see the dashboard and everything. But then I'm also going to have another mode when I kind of drive off camera where I zoom in, lose the steering wheel, and the end of my, my real physical dashboard is just going to be the hood of the truck. So kind of looking forward to that. And... Uh, kind of happy that, that there is a solution like sim projects out there again I wish the gauges were I wish they had a few more gauges um, but you know that's kind of what you have to deal with when you don't understand a lot about the hardware and the wiring and all of the coding and stuff like that I mean see things like on Facebook and 
various discords and how these guys have some amazing rigs but they either have a background in electronics or they have a background in automotive so it's a lot easier for them to already understand this kind of thing how to take a real working gauge and convert it electronically and things like that so I don't have that background so I'm gonna have to settle with what is more or less pre-done I will have to wire it myself but that pro uh, pro gauge board it makes things so much easier we're just kind of going through these winding roads here. We've got about an hour left. I'm going to catch back up with you when we are closer to the drop-off point. So we're just kind of cruising into Wenatchee right now. And if you notice, if you guys haven't tried this mod, the lights, the street lights, I have that orange street light glow mod in there. It makes it look a little bit more realistic at night instead of like that white light. Continue straight. Oh, are you kidding me? This is a short light. This is the uh, third light on this street that I've hit, and it's kind of crazy, but, you know, just trying to show you guys the orange light on here and how much of an effect it really has it makes it look a little bit too realistic. Some people say it's a little bit overdone, it's a little bit too saturated with orange. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty accurate because these street lights are... Uh, they are really orange in person, and at night you don't have a whole lot of other light going on, so... Oh, don't make the same mistake here. And we're just right around the corner now. From uh, the Dollar Tree, where we're dropping these uh, Dixie products off. zoom in on the map so we know exactly where we're turning keep left and then turn left turn left looking good here not like we have a choice with those X's of where we're going missing a lot turn of gears right. here and here we are You've arrived. It's been my honor and duty to see you through this mission. Well, thank you, Morgan. I really appreciate it. Get out and have a look. What's going on out here? See if our trailer's gonna... Ah, oh, we're gonna be fine. We're not gonna be fine. Unless we turn a little bit more, though. There's the Dollar Tree. And parking in the back. If they have us going up to the dock or not. Going to get it four ways on. Windows down. Also, one other thing is there's no sound for the uh, there's no audio on the window uh, animation. Oh, you know what? They actually have us not going into a dock. We're pulling straight in to the left. If we can make that turn, I don't know. I think I may have started it too late. Yeah, I did. Let's go ahead and hit the horn. Then we're going to have to back up again. It's one of those parking spots that it looks pretty easy, but because you've got this uh, fenced off area to the right and you don't have a whole lot of room to make a wide turn, a lot of times I end up just backing after I get through these lines. See how close we can get. Yeah. I mean, it'll probably take it, like, to be honest, but... I don't know how how I feel about it. Yeah, let's pull up now. Overcorrected just a little bit too much. We'll go ahead and back it up. Looks like we're pretty lined up though. That way we're looking nice and neat between the lines. Just waiting for it to turn green. There we are. All right, parking brake on. Windows up, we're gonna keep the four ways on. Parking lights on only. And windows are up, so. Ignition off. And 
Welcome to Wenatchee. Thanks for uh, riding along with me, delivering some uh, Dixie Cups. Let me know. Um, let me know what you think about the truck, the trailer, the the, uh, the great skin on both of them by Richard Brown, and also uh, leave me comments or questions about the new uh, Matt VT yard, uh, Woodhurst, the town of Woodhurst, and everything. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can see all of my videos. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.